This is very important. Last night, Peter and I both got a working over on the ABC. Peter on Q&A. Uh, no, I was on Q&A. Peter was on Media Watch. That's probably a bit of a novel experience for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on that program, Media Watch, which has zero credibility, I tend to be clickbait. But then, allegedly, and I'll demonstrate in a moment what I mean by allegedly, if you're talking about Q&A and reporting on Q&A, I got a quote-unquote roasting by News Limited. I thought that's as it was reported at News Limited. I thought we worked for News Limited. Anyway, I'm referred to as a shock jock being, quote, slammed by a panel of science experts all on the one side. They are experts according to their own evaluation of themselves. I was accused of downplaying the human impact on climate change. Of course, no attempt was made to contact me so that I could offer a defence. That's the ABC. But one of the guests was Professor David Caroli, referred to as an Australian atmospheric scientist based at the CSIRO. And a questioner asked Professor Caroli the following. I saw the radio commentator Alan Jones on TV recently and he said that 0.04% of the world's atmosphere is CO2. The questioner went on and 3% of that is created by human beings around the world and of that 1.3% is created by Australians. The questioner said, is that correct? And if so, is human activity really making a difference? A pretty good question. Professor Caroli replied, not everything Jones says is factually correct. No wonder he stumbled in seeking to repudiate me. He went on to say that while it is correct that 0.04% of the world's atmosphere is carbon dioxide, quote, Jones's statistics around humans, I think it means human beings, causing climate change and the role Australians specifically play is completely false. He said, I'm a climate scientist and Alan Jones is wrong. All his other numbers are wrong. Now, remember, he said 0.04 of a percent of the world's carbon dioxide was correct. The other numbers that the question referred to were 3% of that is what human beings create around the world and 1.3% of that 3% is created by Australians. Caroli said, though, all his other numbers, they must have been those last two numbers, are wrong. Well... On the 25th of May 2011, I interviewed Professor Caroli on radio. Let me just play you an extract, very brief, of that interview. It was very courteous and very friendly. Just listen to this. Professor Caroli, good morning. Good morning, Alan. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Can I just begin firstly with a little bit of maths so that we can agree on a couple of things? Would you say it's unarguable that the level of carbon dioxide in the air is less than 0.04 of a percent? Yeah. And if I, if I make that point, because nitrogen we know is about 78, oxygen about 21, and then there's argon and things like that. But CO2 in the air, about 0.04 of a percent. OK. Do you agree that the UN IPCC Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says that of the Earth's annual production of carbon dioxide, this 0.04 of a percent that's in the air, nature produces 97 percent and human beings 3 percent? Of the annual fluxes that go in and the annual fluxes that come out, yes. That's it. So I just want to get this clear on maths, because you're the scientist. I'm not. 0.04 of a percent of the air is carbon dioxide, and of that 0.04 of a percent, 97 percent is produced by nature and human beings, 3 percent. Now, of that 3 percent, all Australian human activity, transport, industry, agriculture, mining, power generation, that stuff, we produce 1.3 to 1.5 percent. Uh, yeah, Alan, you're absolutely right. Alan, you're absolutely right. That ends that. But he slammed me according to News Limited, for implying that Australians contribute a negligible amount to global warming. Well, if 0.04% isn't negligible, and 3% of 0.04% isn't negligible, and 1.3% of 3% of 0.04% isn't negligible, then the word negligible has lost its meaning. It's called a slam dunk, Alan. That is blokes, called a slam. Are cool. And, of course, this is the ABC. They get away with it. They get away with it. I'm sorry, Professor Caroli, you can't be right on both occasions. You told me back in 2011 those questions I asked. Is 0.04 correct? Yes. Is 3% for human beings? Yes. 
Is 1.3 per cent of 3 per cent correct? Yes, absolutely, I think you said. Then, of course, on television, you go on last night and say, no, Jones is wrong. Of course, it's conventional clickbait to bring Alan Jones into the deal. There was no one there with an opportunity to tell Professor Caroli that what you were talking was in contradistinction to what you said all those years ago. However, however, let me go on. Let's just put that aside. I stand by what I've said for years. We are talking about a global warming hoax, demonising carbon dioxide, demonising coal-fired power, which has led us into this economic suicide mess. Business can't afford the energy bill. People at home can't afford the electricity bill. Why? Well, we export our coal so that others can have cheap electricity, but we're not prepared to use it so that we can have cheap electricity because carbon dioxide is destroying the planet. That's what Caroli and the mob on Q&A would have you believe. Well, today on radio... Now, I don't ever do this, as you know, but bear with me. I spoke to Nils Axel Morner, Dr Nils Axel Morner, the former head of paleogeophysics and the geodynamics department in Stockholm. He's a world authority on sea levels. He was on the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, chairman of a significant committee. He is saying that the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is misleading humanity about climate change and sea levels and that, in fact, a new solar-driven cooling period is not far off. He has said he tried to warn the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that it was publishing false information that would inevitably be discredited, and he said they ignored him. So he resigned in disgust and has decided to blow the whistle. I spoke to him this morning from Stockholm in Sweden. Now, it isn't possible to talk to him on television tonight, but Peter and I thought we should do this because it's immediate and urgent in the light of the rubbish of the last 24 hours. It was important to hear what he had to say. So I just hope you'll bear with me. I know this is difficult. This is 11 minutes and 30 seconds of climate change dynamite. And I suppose he'll be vilified for his trouble, as we all are. This is how it began. Well, here in this country, in Australia, children are being taught at schools that Bondi Beach could finish up at Bathurst. You've been tracking sea levels at various parts of the globe, have you not, for 50 years. Are sea levels rising worldwide, which the climate change apologists keep telling us is happening? No, certainly not. Certainly not. In the northern hemisphere, and especially in the European, we can prove and test that absolute, absolute sea level is not rising more than about one millimeter per year. If we go to the equatorial region, and now we come closer to Australia, it's not even rising at all. Amazing. And it has been stable for the last 50 to 70 years. There you are. And that is a fact. There you are. The UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says that claims changes in climate and sea levels are because of human emissions of carbon dioxide, CO2. You're saying it's solar activity which is the dominant factor and not carbon dioxide. Yes, for sure. You're saying that carbon dioxide, which, of course, we've said many times on this program, is the essential gas required by plants, it's being exhaled yes. as you and I speak now, makes up a yes. fraction of 1% of the so-called greenhouse gases present naturally in the atmosphere. So you're saying, are you not, that the CO2 argument that this causes climate change and global warming, I think your words, absolutely not. Yes. You said, quote... There's something basically sick in the blame carbon dioxide hypothesis. Yes, for sure. And, I mean, it was launched more than 100 years ago. And almost immediately, excellent physicists demonstrated that, it, that the hypothesis didn't work. Then later, uh, in time for the IPCC project, it was dug up and used as, uh, as a tool to um, promote this uh, terrible idea. 
Right. You were on the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and you tried to warn your colleagues on the UN body that the politically backed hypothesis about CO2 driving temperature changes, those hypotheses were totally incorrect. Am I right in saying that that was the advice and they ignored you? Yes. And they won't discuss I was, it? I was the chairman of it, the only international uh, committee on sea level changes. And as such a person, I was elected to be the expert reviewer of the sea level chapter, written by 38 persons. Not a single one was a sea level specialist. Three were from Austria. Austria doesn't even have a coast. So it was very weird from the beginning. I was shocked by the low quality. I mean, it was like a student paper. It was, it was just very low quality all through. But I went through it and I showed them that it's wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong. And in one case I said, look at your own diagram. Because the diagram you have presented, it shows that what you are writing is wrong. Mm. And what did they do? They took out the diagram and left the, uh, the writing. And, of course, you made the point also that they won't discuss it. And you have said, have you no, not? No, no, no. In science, we discuss. We don't forbid or neglect. If I could just interject here, Dr Morner, um, you may be interested to know, but my listeners would be, that uh, I'm regularly attacked here on the ABC. And last night on the ABC, there was a, allegedly a science panel, a Q&A science panel, and the headline this morning says, radio commentator slammed over climate change remarks. I might add I wasn't even on the panel. Well, here we are now talking about views on climate change. What about the argument, Dr Morner, that 97% of scientists agree? Oh, yeah. oh, oh, no, 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 no. That is so terrible, so we cannot even discuss it. But I used to say in the contrary, OK, if you want to keep this 97% discussion, keep it for yourself. But I will tell you that 97% of what we, I'm saying is correct. You may have 97 of the persons, but we don't count persons. We can, we, in our business, is the scientific truth. And the scientific truth is on the side of the skeptical people. And then when you come to the, the idea of 72, this is just a lobbying trick. They, want, they get money. I have hundreds and hundreds and thousands of, of high-ranked um, uh, scientists all over the world which agree, agree that, no, no, CO2 is not the driving mechanism and everything is exaggerated. Sea level cannot rise. There's no, no way sea level can rise by two metres in the beginning of the next century. This is against physics. Can I just come back to this business about carbon dioxide driving temperature changes, which you've said is totally incorrect, and the International yeah. Government, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change ignored you, and they won't discuss it with you. You say that in the field of physics, have you not said, 80 to 90% of physicists know that this carbon dioxide hypothesis is wrong. Yeah. I agree with that, yes. Right. And amongst geologists... And most of the astronomers right. and most of the geologists, of course, uh, metrologists there, they, they believe in this, because, but that, that's because of their own profession. Mm. They live on it. Right. I just want to repeat what Dr. Morner has said. In the field of physics, 80 to 90 per cent of physicists know the hypothesis about CO2 is wrong. Amongst geologists and astronomers, 80 per cent know the hypothesis about carbon dioxide causing global warming is wrong. You say, or you suspect, that behind the scenes promoters of the man-made warming hypothesis have ulterior motives. Yes. Is one of them the fact that if you say this, governments will give you money? Yeah, one is that, and then it's a wonderful way of controlling uh, taxation, controlling people. I mean, here in Sweden we have the left, we have the right, we have the, all the environmentalists. They, f for the first time, they all go together.
and there is no opposition. Uh, Dr Morty, you know scientists around the world. You know of Dr William Happer, who was a world-renowned physicist yes. from Princeton University. He advised yes. President Trump on climate change. He too has denounced this warming alarmism and the demonisation of carbon dioxide. And Professor Happer has said, and am I right in saying this, that there's nothing to worry about from alleged man-made global warming or human emissions of carbon dioxide. He says carbon dioxide will be good for the earth and CO2 levels yes. are unusually and extremely low by historical standards and more carbon dioxide would be a good thing. Do you agree with that? Yes, surely. And we have the Earth is at least 10 to 20 percent greener now to the, this little extra CO2. Quite. And in one of the worst deserts in the Sudan, they suddenly have got into a step phase. And it's not because of rain. There's no more precipitation, but it's more carbon dioxide. Can I just come back? You say the promoters of man-made warning hypotheses will ultimately expo be exposed. You say it's unscientific that they've ignored facts and that one day it will be yep. revealed as nonsense, but then scientists will lose their trustworthiness. Yeah, that's, a, that's the unfortunate thing, mm. because in, in a decade or at the most two, we are, will be in another phase of low solar activity. You've said this is this is this whole carbon dioxide man-made global warming stuff. This is the most dangerous and frightening part of it. How such a lobbyist group, that's this IPCC, have been able to fool the whole world. Yeah. And you said these quote organised and deceitful forces were dangerous, and you expressed shock that the UN and governments would parade children at UN yeah. climate summits. And you say, what do they know? They're very nice, all of them. But they should be out playing, not talking at the United Nations. And you say, it's a little evil that children would be used as propaganda props. It's an insult to science. Yes. 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 That's exactly how it is. That's exactly how it is. And in spite of and this... It, sorry. And this, I mean, that they have been able to fool and change the world. It's so dangerous for the survival of, of the society that people can do that. And this is what have tr triggered me to go out of my own professional and also speak up loudly, because uh, we must uh, get this CO2 disease out of, of, uh, of science. Good on you. It's great to talk to you. We must get the CO2 deceit out of science. Deceit. Yes. I'm grateful for your time, Dr. Nils Axel Morner. Thank you for speaking for us at this hour of the night in Stockholm. Very, very grateful. We'll keep in touch. Mm. It's astonishing, isn't it? Uh, by the way, don't expect any of that to be reported anywhere in the mainstream media. It doesn't suit the agenda of the left.